so much again for being with us. And on today's Women's Rights Show, we are happy, we are glad, we are excited to bring you the most amazing guest on this show. And uh, I hope you're all excited to meet her. And that is none other than the chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, Miss Mariam Wangandia. You're so welcome on this Women's thank, Rights Show. Thank you. Yeah. And I say hi to everyone watching and listening to. Yeah. Yes, we send you greetings. And myself, the host, I am Joanna mm -hmm. Atkunda. Thank you so much for being on this show. And we're going to have quite an amazing time as we understand what uh, is done at the Uganda Human Rights Commission, who is the brain behind all the amazing work that is being done, and the leadership. And uh, we all know that leadership is, is the topmost thing. And if the leadership is not right, then everything doesn't go well. But we are happy that she's been doing the amazing work. And I'm so honored and privileged yes to be the one to have you on this show so we welcome you on the show and say hi to us once again introduce yourself and tell us more about yourself thank you joanna for your gener generous and kind words uh, of introduction and thank you for the opportunity given to me mariam but also given to the chairperson of the human rights commission to be heard and seen by the whole country and actually the whole world. And um, my name, uh, once again, I'm Mariam Mutonyi Wangadia. I'm a lawyer by profession. I'm also an advocate. I'm the chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. I hail from Bulambuli district. Uh, before I became chairperson of the commission, a little over a year ago, I was deputy inspector general of government. And before then, I was a member of this same commission, Uganda Human Rights Commission. But I began my career as a lawyer in a private legal practice in a law firm in Mbali. Uh, beyond being a lawyer, you know, you are... Uh, a person, yes. uh, you are someone's baby, sister, before you become all these things. And uh, I have three brothers oh. and I have two sisters. I'm also a mother of an amazing 26-year-old boy. Yes. That's nice. All right. Um, this is this is really nice yes before we become all the things that we are we belong somewhere we belong to a family we belong to uh all the other amazing communities and it's it's, it's amazing to to hear that you recognize them and we we know that wherever they are they, they're watching and they're excited about this so uh i have uh, read some some things about you and uh we have heard that you have um, had a career that has taken you through all these leadership roles as a deputy uh, inspector of Gen the inspector general of government. Now you're here as the chairperson. But what has your what was your early career life like? And uh, what as as people who are watching, including us, the young people, mm -hmm. what what was your early career life taking uh, taking one a step uh, at a time? where you began from as a lawyer, just after school, maybe we would want to yeah, okay. learn from that. Yes. First of all, before career life, uh, natural life. Uh, I began my life as a, a baby, uh, a small baby, uh, to my parents, retired teachers, one of whom has been deceased two years uh, ago. And uh, my 93-year-old father is still alive and kicking somewhere in Ibulambuli district. When they had me, they were teachers in uh, uh, Gamatui. This is uh, a school in a present-day Kapchora district. And uh, I had my primary school education, uh, partly in Ibulambuli district but later on in Iganga district. And uh, later on, 
I joined the Ngora High School for Olevo. This is in Ngora District and later Chivuli SS here in the Kampala District. And then Makerere University and the Law Development Center. And I went on also to acquire uh, a master's degree, this time in public administration. And I began my career in a private law firm. This law firm was uh, situated somewhere along Republic Street in Mbale District. It was called uh, Dagira and Company Advocates. And uh, I eventually became a partner in that law firm. But uh, uh, in 1996, towards the, I think, November, I was appointed as a member of the Pioneer Uganda Human Rights Commission, headed by Mrs. Margaret Sekadja then. And with other members, I think I remember all the Pioneer members. I say Pioneer because this was the first time we were having this institution. We had the late Father Johnny Mary Waligo. We had the late Adrian Simo. We had now Justice of the Supreme Court, yeah. Her Lordship Faith Monda. Mm -hmm. We had um, Constantine Karusoke and, uh, and myself, yes, with Mrs. Sekadja as our chairperson. So I was honored to, to be part of this Pioneer Commission. And I should add that uh, while in a private legal practice, I concurrently did voluntary work with the FIDA Uganda. Oh, yeah. FIDA means the Federation International de Bogadas, uh, Federation of International Women Lawyers Associations, Uganda chapter. Yes. Amazing. All right. And so I see you have uh, literally kept in the way of, of the human rights in everything that you do. And, and this speaks of um, a great person, of a great passion in regards to human rights. So as the chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, uh, where, where does it derive its mandate and, and the staffing mechanism? You've talked of all these great people you've worked with. So mm. what is it like uh, in the Human Rights Commission now as a chairperson? Can you like tell us more about uh, the commission, its mandate, and... Uh, yeah, that's the staffing mechanism. Okay, uh, those are two issues in one. Uh, starting with the mandate. The mandate of the commission is uh, derived from the constitution of the Republic of Uganda, Article 52 in particular. Yeah. And uh, this article is actually replicated in Section 7 of the Uganda Human Rights Commission Act. Yes. Uh, this article... 52 provides the functions of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Maybe I can just go through some of them to investigate at our own initiative or upon receipt of a complaint um, against any violation of any human rights, uh, to visit jails, prisons, and other places of detention, or related facilities with a view to assessing conditions of inmates and taking the necessary action to establish a continuing program of research, education, and uh, information to enhance yeah. respect for human rights, uh, to, to do civic education, to teach and encourage the people of Uganda to defend this constitution, to provide uh, to produce periodic and annual reports uh, to the Speaker of Parliament, to the President and the people of Uganda, to monitor government compliance with international legal instruments and perform any other function uh, provided right. by the law. That's so th 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 that's the mandate okay. of the Commission. Mm. Uh, the same provision is actually in Section 7 of this okay. act. Uh, talking about the staffing, uh, under our operational guidelines and under this act, mm -hmm. we are empowered to recruit our own staff. So today we have uh, both technical and support staff, mm -hmm. 
we have 12 regional offices across the country and 11 field offices. Uh, field offices are a bit smaller and are under regional offices. Uh, to give an example, uh, in Midwestern Uganda, we have uh, two regional offices in Hoima and in Fort Porto cities. But within uh, Fort Porto uh, regional office, we have a field office in Kasese. Yeah. And we have another field office in Vundibugyo. Yeah. In Arua, we have a regional office in Arua City, but we have a field office in Moyo. We have a regional office in Gulu, but with a field office in Kitugum. So those big regions, um, we, we have provided both an office okay. for the region, but also the field uh, office. The field office. Okay. Yeah, it would be our wish to make a physical presence in yeah. every district, but owing to the serious logistical challenges, mm -hmm. that has not been possible. Mm -hmm. So in every regional or field office, we have staff. Okay. Uh, overall, we have close to 200 oh. staff. Okay. Yes, we have five directorates headed by directors. Mm. And um, within the directorates, we have units under those directorates. Right. Yes. Hey, that's amazing. I think Ugandans now know <coughs> where the offices are at the region, the head offices in every region and the field offices. And that's quite amazing. I, I don't mm. think many people knew yes. that those offices are there for them to be there. So Thank you, uh, Joanna. Next time you interview me, Mm -hmm. I will share with the audience yes. the toll free lines oh. we have across the country. Okay. Each yeah. and every regional office, including head office, has a toll free line okay. on which Wanainchi can call us and mm -hmm. report okay. cases of human rights violations. Mm -hmm. We also launched, uh, we call it UHRC app, okay. uh, through which complaints can be lodged. And any information sought, mm. for example, updates mm. on how okay. far we have gone with investigations or hearing cases. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. So um, this this is going to be a bit um, uh, looking at uh, the Human Rights Commission and and its independence and where it has come from. Uh, we sometimes get to think, oh, maybe you will clarify this. Aren't you, like in many ways, uh, performing under the direction of an invisible hand? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that maybe that it, maybe it's what us as Ugandans think, mm -hmm. but maybe it's, it's not it. Can, can you like uh, mm -hmm. clarify that? Uh, that's interesting, Joanna. Mm -hmm. Let me begin with the law as it is. Yes. The Constitution says the Uganda Human Rights Commission shall be independent. Mm -hmm and shall, be not, shall not be subject to uh, direction yes. or control by anybody in the performance of its duties. And uh, I should add that uh, we also have a security of tenure. Uh, my contract, for example, and those of members of the commission mm -hmm. is a six year contract. It's very well protected. Mm -hmm. The procedure of removing mm -hmm. the chairperson of the commission or a member of the commission is similar to that of removing a judge okay. from their office. Yeah. It's so elaborate. There has to be a complaint, then an investigation, mm. a report mm. is prepared and issued, mm. and then a tribunal is formed involving uh, judges from outside Uganda to again inquire into my conduct. So I've, I'm going through all this uh, to make our viewers understand that uh, yeah. we are protected yes. by the law. Yeah. But uh, talking about independence, yeah. uh, most people who raise that issue of invincible hand yeah. assume that maybe it's the state yeah. or government yes. which influences us unduly yeah. and causes us to act to their whim. But we are supposed to be independent of even uh, yes. other individuals and uh, groups other than the government. For instance, 
we are not supposed to be driven in our work and decision making by the opposition or by um, maybe civil society groups or by uh, maybe our friends uh, in the donor community. So this independence should cut across mm -hmm. all stakeholders. Yeah. Having said that, yeah. uh, the, pro the constitutional provision on independence, by the way, applies to other constitutional bodies, like the Inspectorate of Government. It is supposed to be independent and not subject to control by yes. anybody. Yes. But I think independence should not be reckless independence. If there is any invisible hand which may influence Mariam in the performance of uh, her duties, maybe that invisible hand is the law, yeah. as it is. Yeah. There is also what we call reasonableness, that you have to be sensitive to the environment around you yeah. as you take a decision. To that extent, maybe the invisible hand is the situation on the ground. Yeah. Let me give you an example of um, uh, the most the recent COVID, or maybe it is it is no longer a pandemic, but we yes. we work and yeah. coexist yeah. with it, yeah. uh, which required a lockdown of the country. Yeah. So, and uh, this lockdown affected many fundamental human rights. Yes. The right to freedom of movement yeah. was limited. Yes. The right to freedom of association. Uh, the, the circumstances of the day mm. sometimes can uh, interfere yeah. with my decision making. Yes. I was giving an example of the lockdown, yeah. which was uh, dictated, yes. I may say, by the president, but actually dictated by the COVID pandemic. And in his wisdom, he decided to lock down the country. Schools were not operational at all levels, yes. whether kindergarten all the way to yeah. university. Yeah. Uh, markets yeah. were closed, yeah. supermarkets, yeah. churches, yes. mosques. Uh, there was no, this heavy traffic you see around yeah. me uh, was not there. Yeah. So the whole country went silent. Yes. So a wide range of Human rights yes. were limited. Yeah. The right to freedom of association, mm. the right to freedom of assembly, mm. the right to freedom of movement, yeah. the right to education, yes. the right to freedom of worship in a community with others. Yeah. yeah. So, in such a situation, mm. the Uganda Human Rights Commission must be sensitive yes. to the realities of that day yes. before maybe we issue any statement yeah. condemning the lockdown of okay. the country. Yes. Before we criticize the government, why aren't you opening schools? Mm. We need to be sensitive to the fact that saving lives must come first. Mm. So maybe to that extent, the invisible hand is this situation. Mm. To that extent, I would plead guilty <laughs> of being dictated by the invisible hand. Yes. But let me share this information with you. Mm. I have been a member of the Uganda Human Rights Commission mm. for close to 17 years before I left in 2013 mm. to join the Inspectorate of Government. Mm. I have been chairperson for a year mm. and two months. I have never received any call or request mm. from government or anyone in the government to, to influence me to make a certain statement or to take a decision uh, which would go contrary yes. to what uh, I would deem reasonable. Mm -hmm. That one has never occurred. Mm -hmm. So I want to assure our listeners that there is no invisible hand okay. directing mm -hmm. Mariam and her team mm -hmm. uh, the way we do our work. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mariam. I think uh, we get we get clarity on that point, so that we don't have to feel like there is always an invisible hand uh, trying to put down our human rights. So, uh, on that note, uh, there's so many 
uh, things that you have taken us through concerning your mandate and everything. So what would you, in your picture, tell us as the current state of the human rights in Uganda? As mm -hmm. looking at, at everything, not even just the pandemic, but mm -hmm. uh, just where we are now with the civil society or with the wanainchi, what is mm -hmm. the current state of human rights in Uganda? I would answer this question this way. Mm -hmm. The current human rights situation in the country mm -hmm. is not perfect, but it's normal. Yes. Uh, the issues pertaining to Uganda uh, occur uh, equally uh, in other countries, maybe even a little bit uh, worse. And we have to look at human rights in their totality. Mm -hmm. Normally, whenever this question is posed to me, it's about a certain specific category yes. of rights, yes. civil and political yes. rights. Yes. But there are so many other rights, yes. the economic, social, yes. and cultural rights, yes. group rights, yes. uh, environmental rights, you know. So all those uh, abound. And uh, uh, in our assessment day to day, uh, judging from the situation as we see it on the yeah. ground, yeah. as we monitor the human rights situation, yeah. as we go through the complaints we receive on our day-to-day -day, uh, basis, there is no crisis of human rights in the country. There is no perfect society in the world. Yes. Human rights violations will always occur, even in the homes. Yeah. Crimes will always be committed, mm. but what's important is how we respond to those violations. Mm. We who are charged with the duty yes. to protect and promote human rights and give redress where it is due. Mm. Yes. Mm. All right. So, yes, it is normal. There is nothing like a perfect society, but yes, yes it is normal. Okay. There is no crisis yes. whatsoever. Okay. Yes. And, um, there, I know there are some some concerns that have happened. Like we said, it's not it's not perfect. So there's some concerns of of, of human trafficking, uh, mm -hmm. the disappearances. Then then the, mm -hmm. when we look at uh, at the the labor externalization, mm -hmm. that that concerns to human trafficking as well. So mm -hmm. and people have raised these these concerns in in societies on media. We, we've seen uh, people raise issues that they're not being guided, they're being trafficked, but it seems like there, there is a silence or these or people that are just disappearing in the name of uh, uh, some some kakeman pick them, uh, the so-called, the infamous drone. So how have you responded to such uh, emerging human rights uh, concerns in in the perspective of okay, it's, there is there is no crisis, but then there are emerging issues. How have the the commission responded to such uh, concerns? Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a number of issues in one uh, on uh, human trafficking and uh, externalization of labor. Mm -hmm. uh, I can share with you that uh, this commission, in our last annual report mm -hmm. to Parliament. Mm -hmm. We devoted an entire chapter uh, on the issue of migrant workers. And uh, even the other issue you raise, uh, disappearances, yes, yes. there is an entire chapter uh, on that. And a detailed one mm -hmm. mentioning um, uh, on disappearances, as you call them, mm -hmm. um, how many people are reported yes. to have disappeared mm -hmm. and where we found them. By the way, uh, this was work done by this commission before I rejoined it. Okay. Yes, this 2022, uh, I mean 2021 annual report covers a period when I was not here and I want to commend okay. the members of the commission and the staff who compiled that information. So some work has already been done. Actually, most of the disappeared yes. were found uh, to be on remand, in prisons, mm. uh, facing trial in a court or the court martial. Mm. And a, a vast majority of them mm. were released. 
And uh, on that same issue of disappearances, yeah. I received information from uh, the Secretary General of uh, the National Unity Platform mm. uh, requesting me to investigate the disappearance of 25 people yeah. who are said to be their supporters. Yeah. But I received this letter uh, upon writing to them first okay. because I've been hearing this. Mm. It has become a chorus mm. wherever I go. Mm. Chairperson, what have you done to the thousands yes. of NUP supporters who are abducted yes. and disappeared? Mm. So it was on that basis that I wrote to NUP yeah. to share mm. with me mm. particulars of those people. Yes. Interestingly, I did not receive a list of a thousand plus people. It was a list of 25 people. Okay. And uh, in our investigation, which lasted uh, hardly a month, because I received this letter on the 29th of November. And uh, between then and now, we've had uh, a Christmas vacation and the other days. Uh, now, um, we found that at least seven of them actually lived in their homes. They have never disappeared. Their places of abode are known. Okay. Three of them are on a police bond answering to charges of murder. Now, in any country, murder is a very serious offense. Yes. yes. Uh, the other four were facing a trial in the Rubaga court, and they were out on bail, and they lived in their homes. Yeah. So this could not have disappeared. Yeah. Uh, the remaining 18, our investigation continues. Mm. And uh, um, I promise that possibly within two weeks, mm. I will share with the country the whereabouts of these people. So in my view, there is no epidemic of uh, disappearances okay. or abductions. Mm. Uh, with uh, external labor, we have um, worked with the Ministry of Gender to streamline the, uh, let me call it, exportation yes. of our young people, yeah. mainly to the Middle East. Mm. The whole idea of um, memoranda of understanding mm. between Uganda and those countries mm. where our people go to seek employment mm. was an idea from this commission. We have also produced a migration handbook and actually, uh, this handbook is being shared across mm -hmm. the Commonwealth mm -hmm. and the world. In, mm -hmm. in other words, mm -hmm. uh, this commission, and I want to commend one of my directors, mm -hmm. Ruth Sechindi, the originator of this handbook. Mm -hmm. We have now become an authority mm -hmm. uh, on this issue. And uh, we have also mapped risk areas mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, uh, recruiting people to be taken abroad to, mm. to work, mm. and also had meetings with the local leaders in those areas mm. to look out for maybe a trickery when it comes to identifying who to be taken yes. to work abroad. Yes. Yes. And uh, I should also add that in my life experience, mm. I know that some disappearances are voluntary. Yes. Okay. Uh, I grew up seeing uh, teenage girls mm. uh, disappearing voluntarily to, to, to go and uh, or eloping. Okay. To go and uh, you know, and then uh, I I th that is about uh, children maybe mm. disappearing from homes. Yes. Uh, th th these street children you see, mm. any Kampala and elsewhere. When you talk to them. They have disappeared mm. from their homes, mm -hmm. running away from violence mm. and other horrible conditions. Yes. But where it comes to state involvement mm. in the disappearances, mm. I so far do not have evidence uh, of the state causing their citizens to disappear. Okay. Yes. But these other 18 names, mm. our investigation continue. Actually, the interruption we had here was occasioned by 
information sought by parliament on this same issue. Mm. They want to see my report, mm. which I shared, uh, the report of our partial investigation okay. on the issue of disappearances. Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, so, that, that, that's, yeah. I think, okay mm. and uh, mm. informative. Of, at, at least those, those the, the cases of uh, political issues that people are disappearing, mm. I think now we, we know that cases mm. have been cases have been reported yeah. and yeah something is but being can done. i use this opportunity mm. uh now that i'm here on this forum Please to appeal ahead. for information from members of the public uh on any person who has gone missing in their area anybody they know of who has gone missing mm. to report to us um to give us the name of that person, mm. their last place of abode, mm. uh, possibly their telephone number, yes. if they can. Yes. Now that we have national identity cards, mm. they can share with us the national identity card numbers yes. of those people. Mm. And the next of kin, mm. from any part of the country, please yes. give us that information mm. and we will embark on our investigations. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for We for will that leave time. no stone unturned right. looking for mm. any Ugandan that who has gone missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much as, as a commission for, for at least uh, committing to do that and mm -hmm. making sure that every Ugandan is at least um, catered for. So looking at um, the universal uh, periodic uh, review mm -hmm. as, as far as the... the United Nations is concerned. I'm sure we've had the third uh, cycle of review. And so yes. uh, we're looking at uh, the updates on Uganda's reporting to the international and regional human rights mechanisms, mm -hmm. uh, of course, in regard to the universal periodic review. Uh, what, what, what is it like? And um, when we look at these reviews that have been compiled by the, by the civil society, and of course, you as being the UN member state and provided uh, with these opportunities, what, what is it like at the international and regional level of human mm. rights mechanisms? We have monitored government compliance with international legal instruments. Right. And uh, what cuts across all these instruments mm. is the requirement to submit reports right. to committee bodies. Mm. And I think... Uh, Uganda is up to date. Okay. Uh, talking about the UPR, yeah. Universal yeah. Peri uh, Periodic Review, yeah. uh, Uganda completed its third UPR cycle yeah. in January last year. Yeah. And um, the Human Rights Commission was part of the Uganda delegation which went to Geneva mm -hmm. to participate in this UPR cycle. Mm. We were represented by a member of the commission, sadly, who never returned alive, the late father, Simon Lokodo, and the two, two staff members. Luckily for them, they returned and they are around mm. with us. And uh, during this review, the country received 226 recommendations, of which 148 we are accepted. The remaining 78 we are noted. Mm. And uh, during this period, uh, state reports were considered under the CEDAW, the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination mm. Against Women, yeah. and the Convention Against Torture. Mm. And concluding observations were raised mm. uh, under each of these conventions mm. uh, in this period, uh, 2022. And uh, both committees welcomed the legal, policy, mm. and institutional developments made yes. uh, in Uganda. Mm. Uh, we have followed up with mm. um, a validation workshop to finalize the report mm. under the International Convention on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Mm. And um, which was held in March last year. The periodic report due yeah. in October 2022 under the um, convention mm. 
this convention was finalized and is due for submission. Mm. The report under the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights mm. uh, was submitted in 2020 and is due for consideration mm. in June and uh, July this year. So I should say we are, as a country, yeah. we are up to date. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm. Uh, sorry about we we felt the loss as a country. Mm -hmm. Remember who didn't return, but um, we at least now know that we are on the same level with the other member states, and mm -hmm. we hope for the best. So um, maybe to uh, as we get to conclude this, uh, tell us more of the highlights of the commission intervention in the previous years. What has the commission done or intervened on in the previous years to bring us to the current state of being up the oh, up thank date. you yes there are so so many interventions we make yeah. on a daily basis yeah. actually human rights work is continuous yeah. it's never endless yes. but uh, uh let me share with uh, uh, our viewers and listeners some of the highlights yeah. uh uh, of interventions in the previous year. Mm. Uh, we have continued to investigate complaints of human rights violations mm. and uh, to do hearings. Mm. And uh, come next week, we are resuming our hearings. Okay. And we will start with those cases mm. where uh, decisions or judgments are ready mm. Mm. for delivery. Yeah. And we will deliver them we have visited places of detention uh, to check on conditions of inmates. Mm. And actually, uh, if I may refer back to the issue of disappearances, mm. one of the investigation mechanisms mm. we adopt is to do unannounced or impromptu visits yeah. to any place where we suspect somebody may be mm -hmm. uh, kept. Mm. Um, we have continued to do civic education. Yes. But uh, this time, uh, my plan mm. is to extend civic education beyond mm. uh, security agencies. Yes. Because sometimes when we talk about civic education, targeting the police, yes. the army, mm. the prisons, mm. local administration police, mm. uh, human rights violations are bigger yes. than security agencies. Mm. We want to extend uh, civic education yeah. to the communities yes. to address issues of gender-based violence, uh, for, for instance. Mm. And, um, we have developed uh, a national action plan yes. on business mm. and human rights. Mm. And actually in Africa, mm. it's only Kenya and Uganda uh, which have so far developed these mm. uh, national action plans on business and human rights. And uh, but other countries are soon um, starting on this. Mm -hmm. You know, Uganda, we are pioneers in many things, including, by the way, the Human Rights Commission as a national human rights institution. Uganda, we were the first mm -hmm. to, to, to have this. Mm -hmm. We have uh, developed a national action plan on human rights. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the booklet on migration. Uh, we have uh, monitored business and human rights, mm. uh, especially in the oil and the gas uh, uh, extraction, mm. uh, ex extractive industries, mm. to ensure that human rights are respected yes. uh, in the course of extracting and mining uh, mm. this resource. And in the same aspect of business and human rights, we have monitored the situation in Karamoja. Uh, Joanna, I hope one of these days you visit Karamoja. I sure will. And you see the marble industry. Okay. Uh, you may not believe you are in Uganda. Okay. Uh, and you see these young teenage girls and boys who are extracting stones uh, from which uh, we, we, we derive cement, lime. So we have been there. And uh, we have shared our concerns with the people in charge of those industries, for instance, uh, child labor and other issues. We have monitored the electoral processes 
uh, in the country. We have monitored and given advisories on emergencies, uh, like uh, the landslides uh, in Ibududa, and including my district of Bath, Bulamboli, uh, the floods in Kasese. We have reviewed bills uh, before Parliament to ensure that uh, um, human rights is not is put at the centre mm -hmm. of every bill yeah. which is debated and passed by Parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all uh, we similarly review policies mm -hmm. and whatever guidelines mm -hmm. uh, government may come up with mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that human rights is at the centre. For instance, the NDP3, mm. uh, we have reviewed that. Mm. And uh, we have also written mm. an advisory to the Minister of Education and Sports mm. on salary disparities yes. among science and That's arts special. teachers. Yes. And because I have not yet submitted this advisory to her, mm. uh, which I hope to do, very soon, in the course of this week, mm. I will not go into details mm. of what is in that mm -hmm. advisory. Mm. We continue to work with the civil society mm. organizations on a number of thematic areas, mm. so, so many of them. Mm. We have signed MOUs with the uh, specific civil society organizations mm. and even umbrella organizations yes. like the NGO Forum. Mm -hmm. Yes and like uh, defend defenders. Mm. So we continue to work with them. They work on different, you know, a wide range mm. of issues mm. and they always bring us on board. Mm. We have monitored the implementation of the sustainable okay. development goals, the refugee situation mm. uh, in the country. Mm. As you know, we are among the biggest host countries yeah. for refugees yes, yes, yes. actually in the world. Uh, the general human rights situation in the country mm. on different rights, like the right to food, yes. the right to health, yes. the right to education. Mm. And here, uh, we don't look at just availability mm -hmm. of health services mm. or education facilities, mm. but we also look into the quality yes. and affordability yes. of those. Mm. So we continue to... Uh, to write periodic reports which we share mm. uh, with the, the public. Mm. But uh, as of now, we are in the process of finalizing our annual report mm. for 2022, mm. uh, but which will be uh, issued this year. Okay. We continue to, um, to have chats, conversations on mm. thematic human rights issues mm. uh, with uh, the media, and uh, other stakeholders, mm. just the way I'm doing right now, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and engage with mm. the public. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, uh, Mariam, for Jefferson, for mm. for those key highlights of the work you've done previously, what you're working on, and what is in the pipeline to be seen. And I hope, I hope the entire country gets to see these reports and probably also give mm. their feedback and, and, and reaction on what they think was, mm -hmm. was either considered or not considered. And yeah, for me, my, my take home is to go to Karamoja and visit yes. what these young people are doing. And I'm, yes. I am, I'm certain it's, it's, it's amazing work because mm -hmm. I would, there are those regions that have had their resources before, but maybe because mm -hmm. of one uh, issue here and there, we have not seen um, the capability of these of these young people. Yes. But now we are happy that the, mm. the, there is work going on and then there are commissions and bodies mm. actually monitoring this and appreciating the good work here. Mm. So we have come to the end of this interview. Thank you. And thank you so, so much Joanna. for allowing mm. us to uh, have you and uh, learn from you. Uh, for, there's so many things that you have worked on and the mm. things you're continuing to work on. And we hope that um, day by day we shall have the, the entire nation know about the amazing things that you're doing, the leadership that is, is taking on this commission and mm. uh, all the questions that they need to know. And you talked about sharing the, the toll-free lines for the rest of the regions to know 
where to do, where to go and who to call. And yes. yeah, we hope that uh, I'll do that. And I look forward to another interview with you where I'll share this yes. and uh, other ideas. Yes. And um, where I'll continue to interact mm. again with, the, with your audience. We hope this is not the end. No, it is not. And uh, I also have six members of the commission. Yeah. I pray that one day, yeah. one of them will be given an opportunity okay. to again being interviewed by Joanna. <laughs> we sure yes. shall, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any last words to the audience and our viewers? Uh, last words is what a great honor and uh, to be interviewed on this online TV to interact with the whole world. My son is not in Uganda, but I know, Becca, you are watching. Your mom, and not just mom, but the chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, mm. talk to the entire world. Mm. And uh, also to appeal to the people of Uganda mm. to be law abiding, mm. to respect the rights and freedoms of others mm. the way they respect mm. their own. Yes. And to, to appeal to the security agencies, uh, and in particular the police, to comply with the law strictly in the performance of their work. That way, if my appeal is taken, there will be peace across the country, and there will be no human rights violations, and maybe this institution may lose its relevance, because then there will be no human rights complaints yes. to be yes. reported. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mariam. And thank you for taking off time to be with us. Hope to have you next time. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah.